So today insyaAllah we will enter yani, into the conditions yani, of ablution and obligate buff Because last week yani, we have covered the sunnah yani, in ablution and also the offensive acts, the makro So these are some of the things yani, that we mentioned uh, in our class yani, last week uh, The author yani, speaks yani, about makro yani, to do tahlil for, uh, tahlil, yani, for, the lahi, uh, for this uh, this beard and when the person is in a state of ihram and for example to take any wudu more than three times and this is makro wastage any of water and to ask any someone any to help you taking any wudu except any if a person any has the need to all these any the things any that we mentioned any last week the things any that are makro makro you need to use any water excessively and so on and so forth so now inshallah any we will speak any about the preconditions any of ablution and obligatory bath so before yani, we start, we have to understand what is yani, the meaning of precondition. In Arabic, yani, we call it shart. The plural yani, of shart yani, is shurut. So precondition, it is an obligation that is not part any of the action. It is not part any of the action. Meaning, when we say this is yani, a condition yani, of ablution, it is not part of ablution. But it is wajib in a sense. It is wajib yani, that we perform this precondition before yani, we perform that particular act. So this is the meaning any of shart. So there is a difference any between shart and rukun. There is a difference any between condition and pillar. Pillar any speaks any about the uh, integrals any of ablution. The things any that are compulsory for you to perform when you are doing any ablution. But when it comes into the condition, these are the obligatory acts that are performed before you you perform any ablution or obligatory buff. So I hope any it is clear any inshallah. Uh, if you have any question, I would recommend that you ask either you ask any to the WhatsApp group or you can ask any to the YouTube. It's easier for me. Any Facebook is a bit difficult because I need any to refresh and so on and so forth and I'm using this PC so I kind of sometimes uh, difficult any for me any to to go back any to see what people are typing in Facebook because sometimes in after the class and I see some questions and are, are asked there so if you can you go to Masjid Khalid YouTube because it is also posted in, in YouTube and you type there it's easier for me any to see Allah Kuli Khalid if there are questions any and likewise uh, the group, the WhatsApp group any if you have so the author any mentioned Faslun Shuhutul Wudu Wal Ghusl any this is any the, the chapter on the conditions any of ablution and bathing the obligatory buff. So he said, number one, al Islam. This is any the first any precondition. What is any the meaning here? The meaning here that uh, in order any for the ablution or the obligatory buff any of a person to be valid, that person must be a Muslim. He must be a Muslim. Meaning, if he is a non-Muslim, any for example, not doesn't have Islam, he is a non-Muslim. And he takes any ablution, the ablution is not valid. Likewise, if he make the intention of bathing the obligatory bath, the, the, the bathing any is not valid. So maybe you, you want to write this principle down. It is important. I will just say out any this principle and in brief. Write this down, inshallah, a lot any of things and it can be solved. So the thing is this Ibada is not valid. Ibadah yani, is not valid without intention. Point number one. Point number two, intention is not valid from a non-Muslim. Ibadah yani, is not valid any without intention. Intention yani, is not valid any from a non-Muslim. Uh, so ibadah from a non-Muslim yani, is not valid. Clear inshallah. So if a, if a person any asks, any, if a non-Muslim fasts, like a lot of people nowadays sometimes they ask, they are non-Muslims who are fasting, they are non-Muslim for example, praying even. They go to the masjid and say, I want to join you for prayers. They pray for example. So the question we ask is, this kind any of ibadah valid and or not valid? It is not any valid. If a person asks why any it is not valid, because in the intention any is not valid. Intention, one of the preconditions any of an intention must be Islam. So if a, if, if a person is a Muslim, then only the intention and is valid. But if a person and is not a Muslim, then the intention and is not valid. Because he does not testify any to the faith. He does not believe in Allah. 
He does not believe in the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the intention to perform ibadah that is the branch any of iman will not be valid because if the foundation any is not valid, the branch any is also will not be valid. If the roots any is not there, the found the the branches any cannot be cannot be established. Clear, inshallah. So this is any the rationale any behind why any we say intention any from a non-Muslim any is not valid. So I hope any it is clear, inshallah. So a person must be a Muslim. This one, any the author says, Al Islam, and then any he said, At Tamiz, At Tamiz, Tamiz any meaning he he or she any has reached discretionary age. Any we use any the word discerning or discerning age. Here I put it as discerning. Type any what is any the meaning discerning age? Or we say. Uh, what do you call it? An age basically it means any uh, an age anywhere a person and is able any to differentiate between good and bad. This is the meaning of tamiz. Because in the Arabic word any when you say tamiz any is to differentiate basically from the word mayaza mayaza you mayizu tamizan mayaza any meaning to differentiate. Like in the Quran any Allah said li yumayiz Allahu al khabitha min al tayyib that Allah subhanahu wa taala differentiate any between al khabith wa tayyib any the bad one from the good one. So tamiz, it is the age where a child is able to differentiate what is good and what is bad. A child is able any to eat by himself and perform it istinja by himself. Now we say this particular child has reached the age of tamiz, and usually it's about seven years of age. The age any of tamiz, and that that boy or that uh, that 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 person is called mumayiz, mumayiz. So the difference any between tamiz and mumayiz is that tamiz, tamiz any is uh, the stage, the stage any of the age, whereas mumayiz any is the person who has reached tamiz. Okay, inshallah. So sometimes any this Arabic, Arabic word any also, we need any to, what you call it, uh, yeah, any kind of uh, understanding any some of your distance. So this is any precondition number two. Number one, any is Islam. Number two, is Tamiz. Number three, one naqa u anil hayadi wan nifas. Yeah, need to be pure from menstruation and and uh, postnatal bleeding. So menstruation, and if a if a woman, for example, is uh, having any menstruation, then uh, what you call it, the wudu, and it will not be valid. And even if she performs any wudu, and of course, and it is not permissible for a woman who is having menstruation to take. Wudu because any wudu any is ibadah and this is any haram any for her. So she is any doing any something any that is fasid. So that is why our scholars any mention this is any uh, the principle any on atalabus bil ibadah til fasida. Atalabus any bil ibadah til fasida. It is not any permissible any for a person to perform an act of ibadah that is that is fasid meaning. That is, uh, he knows any that this is something any that is not valid any for him, but yet any he performs is haram any upon him. Like like a person any for example, he knows that he doesn't have wudu, but he wants to pray. Is it permissible any for him any to do it? It is not any permissible. Is it haram? Yes, and it is haram. So these are some of the things any that we have to, that we have to understand why it is haram any because talabus any bil ibadat al fasida. Yani he uh, intentionally any performs any act of ibadah. Which he knows that this is like not valid, as though he's playing any of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, as though he's taking this as a, as a, as a, as a playing, and talking any about playing any with Dean. Uh, recently, I I saw some videos. You know, recently uh, there is this uh, commotion any about there are some Singaporeans, uh, Muslims, who are making any some videos any online and all these things and making fun any or certain things. And then you know, I I I saw that so many of the things any that they are making fun of are basically any Islam, the religion, like the a man any wears any hijab and making fun, uh, what you call it, uh, speaking any things any that does not make sense any at all any just any for the sake any of comedy. Now this is something any that uh, is not permissible any in Islam. It is dangerous and it can make any a person apostate and if it's not. Careful to make fun any of the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is uh, what you call it is something any that is dangerous. Dangerous, of course, any it is haram, but we say it is dangerous. Any why any dangerous? Because any if a person any is not careful, it can lead him any to apostasy. That if a person any 
uh, what you call it, make fun any of the, especially any on the, on the, uh, uh, on the pillars any of Islam or pillars any of Iman. If a person any make fun of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala or make fun of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or make fun of prayers and even prayers, correct or not? Make fun any of prayers or make fun any of fasting and so on. Now this are uh, what you call it. A person any is walking any on thin ice. So this is the thing. But if a person is ignorant, he is in need any of someone you need to to tell him any nicely, to advise him, yeah, because ignorance any can lead any a person any to serious any issues. So that is why any there is a saying in Arabic: the worst enemy in is ignorance. The worst, the worst enemy any of a human being is any ignorance. Because any by having an ignorance, any people do not know where he is he is leading to. He can lead himself into destruction. But he does not know the fact that he is in that any situation. So, ala uh, kulihal, these are some of the things that we have to be careful in nowadays. But uh, when when I look at the situation now, I see any like people are making fun any of Islam. Uh, among amongst any uh, people any who claim themselves any as as Muslims, and you know because any we Muslims any today we are in our weakest weakest any point. You know, a person any can just any make fun any of our Deen and. You know, he can just escape any laughing and so on and so forth. But we, what you call it, must understand, and we we need any to take a stand to prevent any people any from doing any such things. If you can advise any, then we advise and so on and and so forth. Now, when we go back any to Muqaddimah Hadi Ramia, so he said, "One naqa anil hayd, one nifas, not permissible any for a woman any uh, uh, having menstruation or postnatal bleeding." Uh, to take any ablution, even if they take ablution, also it's not valid in from them. Wa amma yamna musul al ma'i ilal bashara, and one of the prohibited conditions any is to make sure that is nothing any that prevents any water from reaching the skin, nothing any that prevents any water from reaching the skin. Yani if a person any has pain, any for example, then uh, what you call it, it is compulsory upon him any to remove any the pain because water cannot reach, cannot reach any the skin. It becomes any wajib. Wajib any for him. So before any taking ablution, we have to make sure that there are nothing any that that is preventing any water from reaching any our skin. And then the author mentioned wal al elmu bi fardiyatihi, al elmu bi fardiyatihi. Any meaning having any the required knowledge of his obligation. Uh, a person any must understand that wudu is wajib. For example. Wudu any is wajib. Washing any of the face wajib. Washing of the hands wajib. Wiping of the head wajib. Washing any of the feet wajib. But if a person any does not know, for example, he thought that all these are sunnah. Whether he says, for example, washing of the face is a sunnah, or washing any of the feet and is a sunnah, or wiping any of the head and is a sunnah. If a person any says any it is a sunnah, then the wudu is not valid. So, basically, what the author is saying that a person must be able to differentiate what is wajib and what is sunnah. This is the thing. The same goes in for prayers. One of the conditions in that our prayers are valid is that we are able to differentiate what are the wajib and what is sunnah. Then, if a person says reciting fatiha is sunnah, then the prayer will not be valid even if he recites any fatiha, because his atiqad, and his belief. That this is a sunnah, whereas it is wajib. So that is why author any mentioned al ilmu bi fardiyatihi, yani knowledge any on its obligation that it is wajib and it is not something that is sunnah. So this is a precondition. Yani if a person is not able to differentiate what is wajib and what is sunnah, his ibadah he will not be valid, because Allah subhanahu wa taala will not any accept any ibadah. That is based any on ignorance. That is based any on ignorance. So that is why this knowledge is far too high. It is compulsory upon every individual Muslim to to study. So he must number one, and he understand that this wudu any is wajib. And then he said, Allah ya taqida fardan muayyanan min furudhi sunnatan. That he does not regard any a clear obligation as a recommended act, as what any I mentioned any earlier. A person any says any for example reciting any fatiha uh, in, in wudu for example washing any of the face is sunnah. Or he said uh, 
washing any of the feet is the sunnah. This is the meaning. Eh? So the wudu is not valid yani because any the condition and is not there. That he does not possess, does not possess any knowledge. Unless any, if a person just enter into the fall of Islam. Now this is any different any situation. If a person any has just any entered into the fall of Islam, it is forgiven because he got no time and it is to learn. Or a person any who lives any far away from the ulama and it is not permissible any for him any to seek knowledge. But nowadays any mashallah any if a, even if a person any lives any in the jungle, now situations any is different, huh? Any with uh, the COVID any now we are beginning any to understand how any we are able any to seek knowledge any even online. So today, like last time any the, the scholars any speak about a person who lives in the jungle, for example, or a person any who lives any far away from the ulama and have no access to knowledge, they are forgiven. Yani they are uh, they are excused. And this is a kind of ignorance any that is excuse. But nowadays any if they are able any to access uh, what do you call it? The internet and they are able any to access any online any lesson, then it becomes any wajib any upon them. So now any the world any change and it is different any from different any from last time. So going back and it what we mentioned and if a person if a person uh, say that uh, one any of the integrals any of wudu any as sunnah, then the ablution any is not valid. But if he thinks uh, a particular particular act in, in ablution that is sunnah as wajib, if the opposite any what happens, no problem. For example, wiping any of the of the ears is sunnah. But if a person say wajib and for me to wipe my ears, and he wiped any ears and he thinking that is wajib, no issue. Yani the wudu is still valid. But the problem any is if you think uh, wajib any to be sunnah, uh, then becomes any a problem any the wudu any will not be valid. Walma uttahu. The next any precondition is that the water must be mutlak, yani must be pure. Pure any meaning here, mutlak meaning pure by itself and can purify. Yani water that is pure, pure and can purify. Water that is pure and can purify. This is the thing. So last time any we spoke any about ma mutlak. What is any the meaning any of water any that is? Uh, water any that is pure. Wa izalatul ainiya. And if we make sure before any we take ablution or bathing any the obligatory bath, that we remove any from our bodies najis, any filth, ainiya that can be seen, or can be can be smelled, or can be tasted. Based any on uh, we uh, the smell. The taste and the color. This is najis ainiya. The meaning of ainiya, it can be detected. Yani either by, by smell, by taste, or by color. There is another type any of najis that is called najis fakumiya. Najis fakumiya is najis that you cannot see the color, no taste, no smell. But you know it's there. This is called hokmiya. Hokmiya. So there is a difference in ruling between najis ainiya and najis and hokmiya. The difference is that the way how any we we cleanse any the field when it comes any to ainiya, then we must make sure that all the properties any are removed when we clean them. But when it comes any to hakmiya, it is enough any just to pour water any on it. So we make sure any that there is no najis ainiya. Why any the author any mention any ainiya because ainiya you are in need any to remove all the properties any of that najis. But if it is any hokmiya, you just need to remove by just pouring any water and is enough. So ainiya any is more serious any than than hokmiya. Then any he mentioned wa an la yakuna ala laudwi ma yurayyul ma. The next any condition any he said, and that is nothing on the body of the person taking ablution which can change the properties any of water. For example, any if there is syrup any on the on the body part any for example. There is any syrup any on the body part, thick any syrup, and you know that the water any cannot once any the water touches any that syrup any it becomes it 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 is it lost any its purity. It becomes what it change any the properties. So that is why we must make sure that it, there is nothing that can change the properties any of water on our body part. So we have to remove them. We have to remove those uh, things that can mix any with water and they can change in the properties any of water. So we make sure that our body parts are free from them. Then he said, 
wa tahaqqul muqtada in bana al hal wa tahaqqul muqtada in bana al hal yani sometimes any for example uh, a person for example any he is any in a state any of doubt whether he has ablution or he has no ablution if a person any in this state can he take ablution or cannot this is a question yani if you are in doubt for example you do not know whether you got ablution or no ablution can you take ablution the answer is no you cannot take you cannot take ablution if you are in doubt so you have any to come any to a state of minimum zon zon any meaning higher possibility that i have wudu or i don't have wudu if a person any is in doubt whether he has wudu or he has not wudu but he knows that he has taken wudu before before this and he is in doubt whether the wudu becomes invalidated or not here we see he has wudu because we go back to the asl we go back again to the origin the origin is he has any wudu but if he knows that he does not have wudu and he is in state of doubt whether he has taken ablution or has not taken ablution now the situation is he has no wudu because the origin is he has no wudu so every time any when we are in doubt we always go back any to the origin what is any our origin if our origin and we have taken any ablution then we have ablution if we have not taken ablution then we do not have then we do not have any ablution um so this is any also a condition also any a precondition that you are not any in a state any of doubt because Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept ibadah based on doubt remember this this is also a principle in fiqh ibadah any is not accepted any based on shak based on doubt and then uh, he mentioned wa an la yu'alliq niyatahu yani that he does not any put a condition any to his intention a condition any to his intention so for example uh, he said that if zaid comes i will i make the intention any to take wudu for example or if the sun set i will take any ablution so he he place any his intention any on something else the sun set then he takes any ablution any because before any he he puts any eh, intention if the sun set i make the intention for ablution so when the sun any set then he what you call it he wash any his face any for example this is not valid this is called ta'liqun niyyah yani he is putting any a condition any to to his intention so this kind of things any will not be valid in ibadah like a prayer is also the same thing a person say i will, I will make intention any for zuhur when my friend enter the room for example then allahu akbar no yeah it's not any permissible any because this is uh, linked any to a linked any to a condition so he cannot any put condition wa an yajri al ma wa an yujri al ma ala al udwi that the water yani yeah, flows on the body part so the water yani yeah, must the mot the water yani yeah, must flow this is any uh, what you call it this is any a uh, condition and he must make sure that the water reaches any the, the body part wa dukhulul waqt li daim al hadath and likewise any one of the conditions any is uh, the entering any of the time any of prayer the time any for prayer has entered for those any with urinal any incontinence any daim al hadath any meaning a person who is consistently any in a state any of impurity so the example any is urinal any incontinence any a person who cannot uh he cannot uh, maintain any his urine that the urine sometimes any come out that he cannot control so we say this is daimul hadas likewise any pertaining to istihada a woman any who is facing uh, chronic any vaginal discharge this is also daimul hadas so for these people they have any to take any ablution at the time at the time when you are prayer they cannot any take ablution before prayer this is this what the author said dukhulul waqt yani meaning if he wants any to pray zuhur for example he must make sure that the time of zuhur has come he must make sure any that the time any of zuhur has entered then only any he takes any ablution clear inshallah the time of zuhur any has come he wash any his private parts then he place any something on the private parts then he takes any ablution 
then he immediately and he performs any prayer. This is this is the condition any for da imul hadas, not for everyone. Like for normal people, no need any for you to uh, take ablution any uh, after the time any uh, of prayer enters. You can take ablution before crying or not. Yeah, any, uh, if you want to pray for Isha any, uh, later on. Now you have wudu now. Can you pray for Isha prayer later? No problem. But for people with uh, these sicknesses, they cannot. They must take ablution again. Yeah, any, when they want to pray, and that ablution any must be inside any the prayer time. Not any before. Then he mentioned uh, wal muwala and continuity for those any with urinal incontinence. And it is wajib. You, continuity is wajib. Any meaning? Washing of the private parts, then straight away uh, taking any ablution, then straight away praying any the, the prayers. All these three has to be muwala. It has any to be continuous. This is any the meaning any of muwala. So I hope any it is clear any inshallah. We have any a few more minutes any left. Sorry. Now any we have entered any into the chapter of wiping on the foot gear. This in Arabic any we call it al khuf. Khuf any is the is the foot gear. So inshallah any will continue. The author any mentioned faslun wa yajuzul masu ala al khufaini. Badalan an rasli rijlain fil wudu. And it is permissible and to wipe any over one's foot gear, hoof, as a substitute for washing the feet doing ablution. So, yeah, uh, let, let me just run through any this thing. Um, now, any the situation is uh, you take any ablution any as per normal, any full any ablution, washing any faces and all these things. And then after that, any we put on any this foot gear. We put on any this. We put on any this foot foot gear, and we make any this intention any of wearing any the hoof, or wearing any the foot gear. Then, what happens any after any our ablution any becomes any invalidated? Our ablution any becomes any invalidated. For example, you you put on uh, the foot gear for example at seven a.m. before you go out of your house to work. At nine a.m. your ablution becomes invalidated any for some reason. Come on. And then you take ablution, for example, at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. and you take any ablution. So when you take any ablution, there is no need for you to wash your feet. So you can just wipe any on the foot gear. This is the meaning of the ruling of hoof. You just wipe any on the foot gear. Tamam? Then any you can perform any of your prayers. And you are given how long? 24 hours. If you are not a Musafir, like now we are living in Singapore, we are given 24 hours. 24 hours any from the time our wudu becomes invalidated. So when we when we know that 9 a.m. any our wudu becomes invalidated, then we are given 24 hours the next day 9 a.m. So you can take wudu without removing your shoes or removing any your foot gear uh, for 24 hours. For 24 hours. Of course, any your conditions, all this any we will. The author any will mention any all these uh, conditions, any conditions any of the foot gear, conditions any of. Uh, wiping any on the foot gear and all these things, but this is just any the the summary any basically. If a, a musafir is given seventy two hours, seventy two hours, mukim, a person any who is living any in his country, is given twenty four hours. Ayo. some people any ask like I, I go to work daily. Can I wear hoof? Yes, any you can. Especially for example, if you are facing difficulty at your workplace, for example, there is no place for you to wash your feet, and you know, like uh, your workplace uh, come up anyway for law, for example, nobody sh should wash their feet any on the basin, for example. Uh, you have difficulty any, for example, you are in uh, your office or your workplace and so on. Uh, so you can any make any this intention any of hoof, and nowadays any subhanallah. Uh, this is not any, uh, well, I don't intend any to promote any, it just happened that we are in this chapter. There are people that are selling any these uh, socks with the characteristics any of hoof. So they are, these socks any are strong, that can be used any for walking, all the conditions any of hoof any are there, it is waterproof. So this can be used any as hoof and subhanallah yani, some, someone any gave to me uh, a pair uh, a few months any ago and uh, I, I wore it. 
and subhanallah and this is uh, one of the things and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy and in reality uh, so for people that you have having difficulty for example washing any of it especially ladies and for example uh, then and you can make any the intention any of khuf any jab by just any wearing any the socks last time any what I used to do any is I buy this uh, leather leather socks uh, I think any in Mustafa they are still selling maybe uh, leather socks and with a zip so I, I use any to wear this anyway when 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 I'm traveling and every time I travel any I will always any have this any in my in my bag especially any in the aeroplane especially in the aeroplane where it's difficult and sometimes you know you want to take any ablution any for example so having this any is especially any in traveling especially like like those any in NS uh, those any going to work having difficulty any to wash any their feet so we should look look any for the things in the Islam gives uh, easiness because the the, the our, our deen in islam and you find that if you if you learn islam you will find it is the, become easier for you to practice islam see the problem any when when people do not know you see when people are ignorant any for example they do not know that there are concessions in islam islam and is a religion and that, that is easy this is what the prophet also many mentioned a deen useful religion and it is easy do not make things any difficult any for difficult any for people and especially nowadays any Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani created you know all this technology and all these you know things that are present any in our society that is not present any in the past like what we are doing now for example we are learning online it is the same as we are in the classroom in subhanallah and if you put in effort any to listen and to learn as though yani you are just any learning any normally so this is any one of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this ummah so we have to look it positively so we should use whatever technology whatever things that Allah make it easy for us we should not any be primitive any in thinking saying any that this or you know during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa this thing and is not there so we should not do this no this is any primitive any thinking we have to understand when it comes any to certain things any in ibadah yes of course and you cannot change but when it comes any to the wasila the wasail the, the means any of using technology and so on and this is from the easiness any that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing us with Aywa. so nowadays mashallah any, you can find any, all these socks and leather socks the, the, the socks any that I was speaking about uh, the thing any that I was amazed at, it, it looks any, just like any normal, not normal socks and we know that normal socks any, you cannot use as hoof any, because it is not waterproof but this kind of socks any out there you can find uh, it is it is waterproof and it is made any of uh, different any material and you can even test and you can even put any the sock any in a pail of water and you won't feel the you won't feel any the the wetness. I will we get any a bit more inshallah. Washartu jawazid masi ayyal bisahu ba'da taharatin kamila. This is based on the hadith of Murira, if I'm not mistaken. Murira bin Shu'bah that he wanted to remove the the hoof of the Prophet Sallallahu in, in one of the battles so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Da'huma Da'huma and he leave the both of them and do not take the hoof because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned I wore the hoof in a state of tahara so that is why it is a condition that before you put on any the hoof you must take complete 100% ablution then only any wear the hoof so this is very very important you have to take 100% ablution meaning from the beginning till the end from washing any of the face to washing any of the feet then only any you make any the intention any to wearing to wearing any the hoof so inshallah ta'ala we will uh, what you call it we will stop here i do not know any if there is any question there is one question here Assalamu alaikum ustaz wa alaikum salam is it okay if you give us the pdf or later pages of muqaddima so that we may print them inshallah ta'ala inshallah uh, anything any i will contact any through the whatsapp group any for those any who are in the whatsapp group i will i, I will give inshallah jazakumullah khair sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen